Hi, Presby class. Well, um, end of term is coming up. You have already broken up um, for the summer. I've been busy in our class today having a big clear out, massive clear out. You should see the pile of rubbish I've just put over there. Um, but hopefully by the time you come back in in September, everything will look sparkly new and all the displays will be up and everything will be ready. Um, before um, I go, before um, we all enjoy our summer, I just wanted to share um, a story with you. Um, it's a book that's one of my favourites um, and I'll explain a little bit why. It's called Sand Horse and the reason that I've chosen it is because it's based in uh, a town called St Ives which is down in Cornwall and it's somewhere where I've been going on holiday now for pretty much all of my life. Um, if you don't believe me, um, here's a picture of me when I was two. I look a bit like Paddington Bear really, don't I? But that's what my parents dress me in. Um, and I'm stood there feeding the seagulls um, in my little um, hat and coat. And then um, it's got a beach too. And here's me in my swimming costume, um, enjoying the sunshine. And I'm probably about four then. So it was a very long time ago. And I've been going there probably every year or two um, since then. Um, I've taken my family there um, as well, my own daughter, and um, she enjoys it just as much as um, I do. And to be honest, I was supposed to be going at Easter, um, but due to lockdown, we couldn't make it. So I've had to change that one to next year, but I'm really looking forward to it. So this story is set in um, St Ives in Cornwall, and it's called The Sand Horse. And I really love this story because it's all about um, following your dreams, um, telling you that nothing is impossible um, and that if you really want something and you really go for it, then it is achievable. It's also been written by um, a man called Michael Foreman. Um, you may know him as an illustrator of the Michael Morpurgo books. Um, so he's done a lot of illustrations before um, and this is the one he's illustrated again. Okay, so let's see what it says. Once there was an artist who lived in St Ives. He lived with his wife and baby in a house by the sea. Sometimes the artist worked in his studio, but on fine days in summer, he went to the beach and made animals in the sand. He could make dogs and cats and seals and dolphins, but mostly he made horses because horses, he said, were the most beautiful animals of all. And there's a picture of him there sat outside his cottage. One morning, the artist woke to a brisk blue day with a choppy sea and white crests on the waves. Look, white horses, he said to his wife. When the sea is rough and the waves have white tops, people call them white horses. The artist saw them far out into the bay, plunging and galloping, tossing spray from their manes. Today, I shall make a horse, he said. And there he is looking out over the pier. He went to the beach. He marked out his pitch, put his hat down on the sand and started work. First, he fetched water from the sea. He splashed some onto the dry sand and he patted and moulded the sand. And here we go. He's beginning to create his um, sculpture. The horse began to appear, muscles, hooves, raised head and rippling mane. The beach filled up with people. They stopped and admired the sand horse. They threw money and the coins chinked in the artist's hat. And there he is on the beach and all the people are watching him. The horse grew. He was a galloping horse, galloping forever on his side. All day the artist worked on his horse, shaping the muscles of his legs and neck, twisting each curl of his mane. Okay, people going about their business and the man at the back just here, building his horse. He worked until the sun set and the beach grew cold. 
Families began leaving. They folded their deck chairs and shook sand from their clothes. The artist scooped up the coins in his hat and went home. If you look here, you can see the back of the horse lying on the sand and the artist going home for his supper. The sand horse woke up. He was alive, but he couldn't move. He opened one eye, but all he saw was clouds. He listened with one ear. He heard seagulls. He heard the boom and the hiss of the sea. And faintly, in the crashing of waves, he heard neighing. A seagull landed on his back and walked about, jabbing the air with his sharp beak. Seagull, said the sand horse. What's that neighing I hear? That's the white horses, said the seagull, out in the bay. Here you go, you can see the seagull perched on his back. What are they doing? Well, they're practicing and frisking and flicking their tails. Where are they going? Everywhere, said the seagull. Newlyn, Polpero, Mevagissi, Marazion. I want to go with them, cried the sand horse. You? The seagull wheeled in the air, laughing, and all of his friends joined in. He swooped down again and said, You, you're only a sand horse. You can't go with them. There you go. If you look really closely, the sand horse is all the way down there fixed to the sand. The sand horse tried to move. He was a galloping horse, but he was fixed to the sand. He couldn't go with them. The sky darkened. The seagulls flew away. The boom of the sea was louder. Much closer now, the sand horse heard the white horses neighing. Come with us, they called. The sea crashed on the shore, flinging spray over the sand horse. If you look in this picture, you can see the fishermen going home after a day out at sea with their catch. Come with us. The sea crashed again and the sand horse was soaked with spray. Come with us, called the white horses, to Senen, Land's End and the long ship's light. A wave broke and flooded the sand horse, drenching his head and mane. I'm coming, he called. Wait for me. Another wave broke and the sea ran foaming all round the outline of the sand horse, filling in every space. The sea sucked and pulled. It was pulling him down the beach. I'm coming, I'm coming, he cried. And if you look at the picture, you can see the waves creeping up round his legs. A huge wave rolled up the beach. It reared, cool, curled over and smashed down upon the sand horse, washing away his mane, his head, his legs and his body. It went hissing back down to the sea, dragging the sand horse with it. If you look really closely on this picture, you'll see that the sand horse, the sand, has disappeared. But look very closely at those waves. The sand horse felt the waves buoying him up. Amongst the waves, white horses were prancing. They neighed and tossed, he neighed and tossed his mane. His hooves struck spray from the sea. I can move, he cried, I can gallop. And here we've got him there, suddenly free from the sand. He frisked and he galloped. He swished his white tail. All around him, the white horses plunged and jumped in the waves. To Senen, they neighed, to Land's End and the Lizard, and they galloped away, and the sand horse went with them. You see them over here. The next morning, when the artist came down to the beach, People looked at the smooth sand and said, that's a shame, all that hard work washed away. But the artist smiled. He knew where the sand horse had gone. 
I hope you enjoyed that story. It's, as I said, it's one of my favourites. Um, and it brings back a lot of good memories for me. So I hope you have a fantastic um, summer holiday. Really enjoy it. Um, make the most of it. Let's fingers crossed the weather stays good. Um, it's been a bit dodgy the last week. But um, make the most of it and come back refreshed and ready to learn in September. I'm looking forward to it. I hope you are too. Take care.